Hi everyone, this is Mix from Sneaks and Ball PH, and today we have a detailed review on the LeBron 9 Watch the Throne. Before we get started, if you do like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any comments, questions, or any suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. Then I'll also be leaving a link to the SNB page Nika on this Facebook group in the description box. And I do hope you can join us over there because that is a place where we talk about sneakers and basketball quite a bit. And it's also where you have the SNB page steel cabinet where I take some shoes that I no longer use or some shoes that I've reviewed in the past and put them up for bidding at way below market value. Then if you haven't already, please do sub to the channel because it really does help us out quite a lot. Then with that out of the way, let's take a look at the LeBron 9 Watch the Throne. The LeBron 9 Watch the Throne was a player exclusive for LeBron when it released in 2011 and it was definitely one of those shoes that was super limited and super expensive but just like with those LeBron 8s that retroed earlier this year, we actually have a 2021 retro of the Watch the Throne LeBron 9. This definitely caught a lot of people off guard and that includes me because like I said this was a super limited shoe. If you go on like StockX and you check the history of the sneaker, the price really just fluctuated between like 2,500 to 3,000 US dollars, which was definitely way too much money for most people. And it was definitely just such a pleasant surprise that they released these because this was definitely a grail for a lot of people, including me. The LeBron 9 did come at a time when Nike basketball was like at its apex. I mean, I can consider like the LeBron 8 to the LeBron 11 sort of that range. He also had the Kobe's at the time as well as the KD's and of course it didn't hurt that he was in Miami so these were definitely in the spotlight a lot and for me being a LeBron fan growing up and even until now these were definitely a must cop. From my own personal experience playing in my OG pair from 10 years ago and lately playing in my other pair just you know from time to time they definitely weren't the best LeBron to play in but they were pretty good in some areas so let's get into more detail by taking a look at the tech specs. So for the traction the LeBron 9 does have a mix of solid and translucent rubber. For the solid sections of the traction you have more of a chain link pattern and for the translucent sections the pattern looks more like a waffle. Right off the bat just feeling them in hand and drying them on my wood floors the solid rubber does seem a little bit more grippy than the translucent and I'm not really sure if that will be the case if I take these out on court but hopefully not because like I said the traction on the LeBron 9 historically was just okay I mean it's nothing extraordinary but you're not gonna be slipping it's just what I would consider average and the durability of the outsole is also pretty average as well especially here at the chain link pattern because in my experience that's the portion that really gets ground down the most so needless to say this isn't the best outdoor option and I mean it is pretty expensive so I don't really think you should make it an outdoor option in the first place. But yeah, for the most part the traction is pretty average in terms of the grip and the durability. Then moving on to the cushion, the LeBron 9 does have a full length pylon midsole with a zoom unit here in the forefoot and an Air Max unit here at the heel. This is actually pretty unique when you think about the LeBron line because it's the only one with a hidden zoom unit in the forefoot and an exposed Air Max unit in the heel. And you know LeBron shoes are really known to have like maximal cushion. But this actually felt a little bit more subdued than some of the other LeBrons and actually felt pretty similar to a lot of the Penny Hardaway signature shoes. If you did get the chance to try a Penny shoe, it's pretty much the same. You have that responsiveness and bounciness here at the zoom unit in the forefoot and the really good impact protection here at the heel from that air unit. That pylon on top is pretty thin, but at least it adds a little bit of underfoot comfort. And overall, the cushion setup does a pretty good job of balancing impact protection with a little bit of responsiveness. But honestly, it really isn't my favorite in terms of like playing basketball because it just feels a little disjointed having a different cushion setup in the heel compared to the forefoot. Just because the forefoot feels pretty close to the ground and the heel feels really high off the ground so you know if you're not used to this cushion setup it'll definitely take you quite a few games to get used to it then moving on to the materials the lebron 9 did release in the fuse era and you can definitely see it on the shoe because you do have a pretty strong but also at the same time a plasticky feeling mesh with flywire underneath for support and better fit and also quite a lot of fuse overlays all throughout the shoe one of my favorite details though on the lebron 9 would be these wings on the lateral and medial side which has this very close in a textile that actually makes it look like a ballistic mesh of some sort and for this watch the throne colorway it's actually different from my other lebron 9s because it does feel a lot softer and a lot more premium 
with my other LeBron 9s, the material they used was like this sort of plastic thread. But with the watch the throne LeBron 9s, it seems like it's more of a textile. And given that it is made of textile, I don't think it'll fray as easily as the LeBron 9s would. Because that really was my issue with the LeBron 9. With this crossed hatch pattern, it would kind of fray, especially if you play in them a lot. So hopefully, given that the shoe has more premium materials, it won't happen to me in the future. Then for the tongue, you do have the same mesh on the upper half of the tongue. But for the bottom half, you have some soft neoprene. The neoprene does feel super comfy on foot and I really enjoy it. But it is another difference from the GR releases of the LeBron 9. Because those actually had an open celled mesh tongue, which does promote a little more breathability. But either option is super comfy. It's just the open celled mesh definitely has a little more ventilation. And then rounding out the other materials, you do have these super flat laces, plastic aglets which I definitely hoped would have been metal since this shoe is expensive, and of course the piece de resistance which is the ginormous plastic crown here on the laces. It is just plastic and has metallic gold paint on it. This is one of the times when I'm fine with it being plastic because if this was metal given that it's so huge, it would definitely be super heavy and clunky. The materials overall are just pretty standard for a shoe that released in 2011, but I am pretty happy that it is a bit more premium than your GR LeBron 9s. But once again, just don't expect anything too crazy because this was the Fuse era after all. Then moving on to fit and sizing, I did go through the size with the LeBron 9 and it fits me perfectly well. There really isn't any dead space anywhere on the shoe and that's really nice because I do remember like my first OG pair having a little bit of extra toe space. So maybe when they remade the molds for the shoe, they made it fit a little bit better and that's definitely a plus. It still isn't too wide foot friendly though because it is a bit narrow here at the midfoot, especially with the shank plate that comes up from the midsole. So if you have a wide foot, I definitely would recommend going up half a size or up a full size. But if you have a normal width foot or a narrow foot, I'd recommend going through the size. The fit's just really nice and the thing I miss the most is the padding that they put on the inside. It was that sort of Nike Pro padding at that time and then they put it on the inside of the shoe. So it just made it really comfy when you cinch down your laces. Then moving on to the aesthetic details, the LeBron 9 Watch the Throne definitely looks really wild because of that crown piece. But overall, aside from that, it is a pretty elegant looking shoe because nothing is really too crazy and I think it was well designed and well put together. So for the outsole, you do have black solid rubber and some translucent rubber as well with a very faint blue tint. You also have this cutout here at the heel with some black pylon and a gold LeBron crown look. Then here at the midfoot, you do have some Air Max 180 branding. And then for what I think might be my favorite aesthetic detail on the shoe, you have a clear plastic shank plate, but underneath you have this black and gold woven in. Then moving on to the midsole, the pylon is all black, and then you have speckles of gold. You also have some zoom branding here on the middle side of the forefoot. And of course, you also have your visible Air Max 180 unit with white pillars and a clear air unit. Then moving on to the upper, it is mostly black from that mesh to the fuse overlays to the woven material here on the wings. Then for your pops of color, you do have this nice gold on the Nike swooshes on the middle and lateral side. Gold here on the lockdown wings, which do serve as your fifth and sixth eyelets. And gold here at the heel with a debossed crown logo and some embossed diamonds. Then here on the lining of the shoe, the back of the tongue, as well as the laces, you have this sort of abstract design with some diamonds, flowers, and like plants. And it's honestly one of the most interesting design choices on the shoe because it just breaks up the sort of like clean black and gold look. But I think overall it really works well with the design. And for your other more minor details, you do have gold aglets with LeBron signature, a gold LeBron signature as well on each of the tongues, and a LeBron crown logo on the insoles. And then for the last detail, I mean you just can't miss it at all. It's that really shiny and really big crown piece. And honestly, it's just way bigger than I thought it would be. I mean, I've always seen these in pictures, but it really doesn't do it justice on how massive it looks when it's in hand and also when it's on foot. Then moving on to the overall aesthetics, I think this shoe is just so elegant looking and so nice. Like I said a while ago, I would put these in the same boat as the LeBron 8 South Beach, and those are definitely a lot more vibrant looking in terms of the color, but I definitely think these could stand up to those because even though those are the more loud ones this is definitely super elegant looking and i mean you have a freaking giant crown which will definitely always catch people's attention it also has that visible air max which is definitely a plus for me because it's just so nostalgic and it looks pretty cool and also plus points for that gold splatter because who doesn't like splatter but in terms of LeBron's signature line, I think this is one of the shoes that can really stand out. And especially in this super iconic and once impossible to get colorway, it's definitely a hard shoe to top. Then moving on to the price, the LeBron 9 Watch the Throne retailed for 11,895 pesos here in the Philippines or 200 US dollars. It's definitely a super expensive shoe, I mean it's in that same price range as like the LeBron 19 
or like a pair of premium Jordan 11s, like the cool grays that we'll be getting in a couple of weeks. But you know, if you are a LeBron fan, at least we can get these at $200 now, for it used to be a super limited LeBron James PE that was inspired by Kanye and Jay-Z in their Watch the Throne album, so it's definitely a piece of sneaker history in my opinion. So if you were just to ask me personally, this is definitely a surefire cup. I did get mine over at the Titan On Demand raffle, and they also released on their Titan app. And like I said, it did kind of go full circle because when Titan just had like one or two stars, I bought my LeBron 9s from them. And now in 2021, Titan came through once again. These are gonna release in the US pretty soon as well. I think the tentative release date would be December 21. But there have definitely been quite a few supply chain issues in the US, so it might get pushed back. But I just hope that it still releases before Christmas because I think a lot of people would really want to get these shoes. So there you have it guys, that was my detailed review on the LeBron 9 Watch the Throne. Once again, if you liked the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already yet, please do make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon for notifications. Then as always, whether you're looking for that retail win or you're trying to pop a shoe that used to be worth $3,000, just keep on hunting.